There was a lot on the line on Sunday afternoon when the Stars took on the Wild, and the Stars came through in a big way. They are now tied with Minnesota for third in the Central Division. We'll talk about yesterday's big win on today's episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, credentialed member of the media. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline, where the game starts. Whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by today's episode of Locked on Stars for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to and follow the Locked on Stars podcast wherever you get your podcast at, whether that's on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. We are free and available no matter where you listen or how you listen. But without any further hesitation, let's get right to it. Talking about the big weekend that was for this Dallas Stars team and one Dallas star in particular. And that, of course, is the stellar sophomore Jason Robertson. The kid from California can really do it all. I mean, where do I even start with this kid? I mean, I could, I could talk this whole episode all 20, 30 minutes probably about this kid alone uh, and the season that he's having, the start to his NHL career that he's having. I mean, this is outstanding stuff. And this is a guy that was taken in the second round of the 2017 NHL draft. If you uh, you ask pretty much every other NHL team that did not take Jason Robertson, uh, some of those teams passing up on him twice. Uh, you have to imagine if this draft was redone, Jason Robertson goes definitely in the top 10, if not the top five. This kid is on the Dallas Stars and is literally a star in the making, not just for this team or for the city of Dallas, but for the entire National Hockey League. Uh, this kid is incredible. He's outstanding. I mean, there's not enough words to describe what we've seen from him through the first 100 games of his career, now 101 games. But game 100 was a pretty big one as we saw Jason Robertson get the hat trick on Friday night in Winnipeg, the season finale against the Jets, a game that the Stars probably uh, should have lost. Um, if you watch that game, I, I think you, that you would agree with that sentiment. Uh, there were some moments earlier in the game where the Stars maybe looked a little bit better, but by the third period, the Jets had found a new gear and were really forcing the issue with this Dallas Stars team. Dallas didn't really have, seem to have an answer that wasn't, oh, here's number 21. He can uh, he can do some pretty neat stuff with the puck in his stick. So thankfully, the Stars come out of that game with two points because it makes Sunday's win mean that much more, and it makes it much more important. But again, yeah, probably a game that the Stars should have lost, but Jason Robertson with an incredible hat trick performance, including a game winner in overtime, and not just an overtime game winner after a long game, a long game where he then played in overtime an over 90 second shift, uh, which for us people just watching on the couch in our seats, maybe you're like, oh, 90 seconds isn't that long. But when you're skating as hard as they are and, tr you know, getting hit and doing all the things that they do on the ice and you could just tell, I mean, he fell down after he scored that game winner on Hellebuck. He was gassed. He was exhausted. Some people fall down like that to celebrate, to be dramatic for the effect. That was 100 percent because Jason Robertson gave it his all on the ice in Winnipeg that Friday night. And he probably just couldn't do anything. There was no energy to do a normal celebrate, a fist bumper, to even bump into the wall standing up. If he was bumping into the wall, he was doing it on his back, which is exactly where he put the team on Sunday again, whenever he got yet another hat trick against uh, his Calder finalist competitor and eventual winner, Kirill Kaprizov, who had two goals in his own right. But he did arrive a little bit late to the party in that regard, scoring two uh, goals on the six on five at the end for the Minnesota wild. But Jason Robertson, again, he's an incredibly smart player for his age. He plays with so much intelligence. And I think a lot of that has to be credited to him playing alongside Joe Pavelski and even Rupe Hintz, who isn't necessarily the veteran that Pavelski is, 
but still a guy that's a little bit older, a speedster, a guy that complements Jason Robertson's game well because Jason Robertson is also deceptively strong. Uh, I, I think the TNT guys were talking about it a little bit earlier on in their broadcast on Sunday. Jason, you know, he's not really much of a, a trash talker or a bully enforcer type. He he looks almost, you know, a little bit innocent out there, if you will. I think like that's just the word for the way that he looks and maybe the way he presents himself, just kind of this go lucky kid. But he's a really, really strong guy. He's really athletic, got a good body type for the game of hockey, and he uses it really, really well. And that was on full display. Not afraid to be around the net on Sunday against the Minnesota Wild. Not afraid to do it either against the Winnipeg Jets and Connor Hellebuck, making him look silly, putting him on a highlight reel kind of play Friday on the first goal of the game. He's a guy that knows what his skill set is, and he utilizes it nearly to perfection every time. And that's just a coach's dream. So I, I, I imagine Rick Bonus and company are glad to have 21 in their disposal night in and night out. And alongside all that, this has been a point that's been brought up uh, it was brought up on Friday on Stars Live with Brian Ray. It was also brought up on the TNT broadcast. I'm sure that they saw some of Brian's talking points from Friday about how cheap Jason Robertson is right now. His contract does expire after this season, but I imagine after the season that he's had this year and last year, uh, the Jim Nill and company will be quick to offer him some big, big money. But as of right now, he only takes up 1% of the cap, $795,000. He's under 800 k right now. Making, I mean, a lot of money for a guy like me, uh, maybe the common person, but uh, that, you know, that's a lot of money for, you know, like I said, normal person, but for a professional athlete, a hundred K, not a very big paycheck, but I, like we said, he's getting a big paycheck this off season, no doubt in my mind, but as of right now, he's an incredibly economical player for the stars team with the production that they're getting from him right now. I mean, that's the beauty of getting these hits in the draft after the first round. If you really, really nail it on a guy then you get the high quality production like you're getting from a guy like jason robertson and you're not having to shell out a ton of money to keep him happy and satisfied which i think the stars won't have a problem with given the production that we have seen from him up to this point in his career it wasn't just robo that had a big day on sunday the whole top line had a great day in total they racked up seven points across the board joe pavelski actually got the scoring started for the dallas stars at the very end of the first period, in true March Madness fashion, got a helper from or for Robo on his second goal of the game. Rupe hints two helpers as well with Jason Robertson on his first goal and his second goal. And then, of course, Jason Robertson gets the hat trick for the final three points of that seven-point tally from the best top line in the National Hockey League. The Dallas Stars, in general, played fairly well offensively. It seemed like we could have asked for a little bit more near the end whenever they're shooting at the empty net. They eventually did hit some of their shots via Jamie Benn and Robo, but the power play also came back and came out to play a little bit. The Stars went two for three on the man advantage, which is a great sign for this team moving forward. The power play has been lackluster over the past few weeks, and so hopefully we're finally seeing it return to form here on the road, and hopefully they can continue it on Tuesday against Nashville and the penalty kill continues to be a pleasant surprise coming out of the all-star break. And it's something that the stars are going to need to continue to ride because the five on five offense still has a way to go before we get to the postseason. But if they can keep the penalty kill going, I mean, the defense five on five is already pretty good as is. If they can have the four on five defense playing at a high level, the stars are going to have a lot more opportunities to win games and to win close games at that. Well, coming up next, we will continue to talk about this game and talk about two Minnesota natives that had a big, big afternoon in the building that they grew up going to games in. Today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens and their product, AG1. Tons of people take some kind of multivitamin, and it's important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's one thing you can do every single day to take great care of yourself. Your subscription comes with a year's supply of vitamin D, which is so important to add in these with winter months when we get not a whole lot of sunlight. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, while still tasting good, 
supports better sleep quality and recovery, supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third party testing. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. It cost him over $100 a day. He created Athletic Greens after experiencing how difficult it was to create an optimal nutrition routine on his own. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and um, arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Jumping back into today's episode of Locked on Stars, your first listen of the day. Your host, Dane Lewis, here at Dane Double underscore Lewis on Twitter and at Locked on Stars on Twitter. Be sure to give us a follow at both of those spots. Here to continue to talk about Sunday's big win that the Stars got over the Minnesota Wild. And it was a big win and it was a big day for two guys on the team who are from Minnesota, who are from the area around the Twin Cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul. Jake Ottinger, the goalie for the Dallas Stars, number 29, is from Lakeville, Minnesota, which is south of the Twin Cities. Uh, and then, of course, Riley Tufty from Coon Rapids, Minnesota, which is north. Uh, kind of the way I was looking at it on the map, if you are familiar with the Dallas landscape, Lakeville, maybe like a DeSoto kind of city in comparison to the south. You talk about Coon Rapids, um, a Frisco, Plano kind of city as far as location to the twin twin cities there could be someone listening that's very familiar with both dallas and the minneapolis st paul area that's like that's totally wrong but that's the way i saw it and putting a little bit of perspective of where these two guys grew up but jake ottinger again really really close to home for him playing on sunday and he got the start in this building against the minnesota wild he got to play last time this team was here but he was the replacement goalie as the stars had given up several goals and eventually gave up seven in that game, but on Sunday, he posted 32 saves on 35 shots, which really two of those shots that he let go in. I don't want to say they were flukes because he was there and he had the ability to stop them. But Minnesota was playing with an empty net from like the seven minute point onward throughout the third period, just about. And so he was facing a six on five for a really long time, an extended period of time. He was getting absolutely peppered by the Minnesota Wild offense. And Kirill Kaprizov is just too good of a player to not get some of those shots in. And so it's hard to fault Jake too much for that. Uh, really more of the fault would be need to be placed on the defense for not clearing the zone as effectively. But nonetheless, in the five on five game, Jake Ottinger was fantastic. He was lights out. He's been, you know, what he's been really ever since uh, the coming back from the all-star break, which has just been one of the best goalies in the league. Uh, and so I'm sure that was exciting for him to get to play pretty much in his hometown. I imagine he had family, friends at the game getting to see him do his thing, doing it well against another playoff hopeful team in the Minnesota Wild. So really no fluke that he gets the win. He gets 33 saves. Absolutely fantastic performance from Jake Ottinger that I'm sure we'll see many more of these in Minnesota over the years. But the really big story has to be number 27, Riley Tufty, the rookie from Coon Rapids, Minnesota, gets his first NHL goal with family and friends in attendance we all know what happened back when the dallas stars came to minnesota last time on november 18th about how he was healthy scratched from the game everyone was livid with coach rick bonus everyone said rick bonus this is the line you finally crossed it after the poor start to the season now you bench this kid whenever he has tickets for his family and friends to come to the game and rightfully so i uh, i understand the frustration and anger there but if this isn't just a pure you know, life kind of redemption arc thing. I don't know what is. I mean, this is just awesome that he he gets to come back. He gets to play here in Minnesota, the arena that he grew up coming to watch hockey games as a kid, uh, and he gets to score, and his family and friends get to see it. 
And in this time, the team is in a better space. I mean, back when they came in November, the Stars were nowhere near a playoff position. They were a wildly inconsistent team, could not string together any wins to save their lives, let alone a road win. Uh, but now they're winning on the road. They're beating teams that are, you know, good and going to be in the playoffs and probably going to be making deep runs in the playoffs. And so just an absolutely incredible, incredible moment. Uh, really, really happy for Riley Tufty. I know he's kind of had a, a tough go of it. I know a lot of the rookies that have been, you know, between the NHL and AHL this season, it's been odd, but we know Riley Damiani has gotten to, you know, come up to the NHL, record his first point. We've seen Thomas Harley record his first couple points so far this season. Really good stuff from the rookies. So glad that Tufty's finally on the board. He's played so hard whenever he's been on the ice, and he's still learning and adapting to the NHL game. And it's finally paid off with what was a good shot from John Klingberg from the top of the blue line. Riley Tufty stays with the play, puts the puck in the back of the net. And it's just so cool to get to see him celebrate and watch the guys celebrate with him. Super, super happy. Congrats, Riley Tufty, on NHL goal number one. Here's to many more and speaking of people kind of on a homecoming we all know that ryan Suter is a former minnesota wild which feels weird to say like you say oh he's a former dallas star he's a former nashville predator but to say he's a former wild like what is a wild uh i'm sure that's been debated before but we're not going to talk about it here now regardless though i know a lot of people have been critical of ryan Suter this season including myself because he is taking up four four and a half percent of the Dallas Stars cap space, making just over $3.5 million this season, which is a lot of money for a guy that has not produced extremely well this season. However, don't look now, but he does have five points in his last three games, which is kind of neat. He's been contributing and, uh, you know, getting his name out there in the mix as of late, especially huge with the absence of Miro Haskinen in the past two games with a non-COVID related illness. We'll take the points from defensemen however we can get them especially if it's Ryan Suter, especially with how much he's being paid at his age. All the production we from, can get from him, the better. So I'm here for it. If Ryan Suter wants to go on a long point streak to close out the year, it would be unorthodox. At the same time, though, it would be incredibly fitting for how weird this star season has been. Well, coming up next to close out the show, we will take a look at the Central Division because don't blink just yet. Don't look now. But the stars are slowly, slowly threatening on not just the wild, but the St. Louis Blues. We'll talk about it in just a second after a quick break. Today's episode is brought to you by betonline.net. Football might be over for this season, but basketball is in full swing for both pro and college hoops. March Madness is here. It's conference tournament week. We have the big dance coming up soon. And BetOnline is the perfect place to get all your latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land. BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. Today's episode is also brought to you by Built Bar. Low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bars with Built Bars. They are better for you. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from 200 to 300 calories, while most Built Bars contain 130 calories, only 4 grams of sugar, only 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and a new flavor for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They are all delicious and there's new flavors coming out all the time. If they think a flavor might be good, they'll make it and it will be delicious and it will be good for you. Because at Built Bar, they're all about taste. They make it taste delicious first and then they figure out how to make it healthy. And I don't know how, but they pull it off every single time. You can go to Built.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order at built.com. And closing out today's episode of Locked on Stars, your first listen of the day, your host, Dane Lewis here. Folks, it it has been a wild, insane season, and it's not even really close to over yet. We haven't even gotten to the trade deadline. But the Dallas Stars are in a really good spot right now as far as playoff positioning. I mean, this is kind of that time of year where we start to st finally, you know, separate kind of the, the last of the fakers, if you will, 
the last of the teams that have kind of stuck around in the playoff picture. Teams like San Jose, who are slowly losing ground. Winnipeg, slowly losing ground in the playoff race. But we're also seeing which teams are legit and which teams are going to make a playoff push, which teams are likely going to make the playoffs. And the Stars are in a really good position. And that's just insane given where they started the year. You know, you look back to their first matchup with the Minnesota Wild in the season back on that November 18th evening when they lost 7-2. to two. Since that moment, the Stars have gone 26, 14, and 1. And they are tied with 67 points with the Minnesota Wild for third in the Central Division. Currently holding the first wild card spot, Nashville with 66 points, holding the second wild card spot in the Western Conference. And it's just so funny because I put a poll back, uh, or a poll up, if you will, back on February 2nd, asking how people on Twitter felt about the Stars' postseason chances. Uh, and the options were they make a wild card spot, they miss the playoffs, or they finish top three in the division. And the way the votes turned out was 42% of the people who voted said the Stars would get a wild card spot. 56% of the people who voted said the Stars would miss the playoffs entirely. And 2% of people said that they would finish top three in the division, which at that time, even I was like, who, who voted for that? Who thinks that this Dallas Stars team is going to be top three in the Central Division? At this time, Nashville was still up at second. Colorado was finally coming into form. St. Louis had already wiped the floor with us several times this season. So whoever that 2% is, I think that ended up only being like one or two people. Y'all are a lot smarter than me and pretty much everyone else uh, who was watching the Stars at that moment because that poll went up the day after that loss to the Calgary Flames at home. That blown lead game in the third period right before the All-Star game. And that just goes to show that being a, a sports fan is just absolutely wild. Uh, you know, I, I feel like the 56% saying missing the playoffs. I feel like that was a little dramatic at the time of that poll. I was airing on the, hey, we can probably still snag the second wild card spot. Uh, now it's turned into, oh, we can get the first wild card spot. Now it's turned into, oh, we can actually get a top three spot in the division, if not a top two spot. Uh, because again, don't don't look now. St. Louis has 71 points and Dallas has 67. And there is a lot of season left. A lot of time for things to go really right for the stars and a lot of time for things to go exceptionally wrong for the St. Louis Blues. This is why we love hockey, folks. This is why we love the world of sports. Uh, you can, And, you know, let it be a lesson back in that Calgary game, as brutal as that loss was. I mean, you can't ride the lows too low, and you, you can't ride the highs too high. I mean, the Stars have won four straight. We've seen them win seven straight back in the November, December part of the season. I mean, yeah, we celebrate the wins. We're excited that the Stars went on the road and beat the Wild in Minnesota. That's awesome. Uh, you know, but now we can't run around. Oh, the Stars are getting second in the division and going to win the cup. It, we just got to take it for what it is. We're in a great position right now. The more wins we can rack, rack up like this, divisional wins on the road, the better. And this is a great time of year to finally be doing these things. The Stars team wasn't doing these kind of things at the start of the year, and they've really flipped the script now because they're finding ways to win on the road, which is just adding a whole new dynamic to this team. And we said that's how you have to win in the playoffs because it's home and home. You know, you're playing two games in another team's building then playing two or three in your own building. It's back and forth. You have to be able to do both. The Stars haven't really had a problem winning at home. They're fantastic at home, and I think that that will continue in the playoffs if the Stars make it there. The road has always been a question, which, again, the playoffs are a different beast, but I think the Stars are finally acclimating themselves to playing away from the American Airlines Center, and now they've done it in back-to-back -back games, loud buildings, division rivals, and they've come out on top. And one of them was in regulation by multiple goals against the better team of those two in Minnesota. They just have to continue to close out these close games. I mean, they they had that three goal lead. Minnesota pulls the goalie. They they crawl back within one. Thankfully, the Stars finally hit some open net shots and and were able to to get the win. But uh, that's kind of been the big issue a little bit this season. It's the Stars' inability to close out the close games. They're seeming to get that figured out too. Still not perfect. This team still has a good amount to work on. Uh, before the season officially comes to the close, if they do want to make the playoffs and if they want to go on a deep run, the five on five offense does need a lot of work still, but there's a lot of time to do it. And I'm so excited to see how this NHL Western Conference playoff race shapes out because the Pacific is still chaotic. The Central now has a lot of moving pieces outside of really Colorado. And who knows what's going to happen, but I'm absolutely here for it. The 
month of March is off to an exceptional start for this Dallas Stars team. And what's still going to be an absolute gauntlet of a month. They just have to keep the same rhythm and the energy up because it's going to be these tough road tests after tough road test after tough road test with hardly any stops at home. And even the stops at home are against teams that are still at this moment in the playoff race. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Be sure to subscribe to and follow the Locked on Stars podcast. If you do not do so already, you can find us on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. We are free and available no matter where you listen or how you listen. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. Now go make your second listen of the day, the Locked on Fantasy Hockey podcast with Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone. Those guys will give you all the insight that you need to be the best player in your fantasy league. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we will be previewing the big matchup between the Stars and Nashville Predators, the season finale between these two division rivals. And it is bound to be a good one. The Stars looking to even up the season series record. But we'll see you there, Stars fans. Thank you so much again for listening. Have a fantastic Monday.